Today, I have Dr. Jill Rubin, who is actually my veterinarian, and Michelle <laughs> Patton, and she is Regenazone's equine specialist, and I'm going to add a spotlight so I show up next to you guys, um, and they are going to talk about ozone for all creatures, but also Michelle is the equine specialist, so she, it, she sent me some photos to share I actually have some video, so we can um, screen share those also, which would be great if you guys want to see that. So Dr. Jill, introduce yourself. I'm Dr. Jill. <laughs> <laughs> I love your clinic because I can go in there sometimes and see pigs and chickens and all sorts of crazy things. It's super fun, Dr. Jill. You're like the, the um, all creatures, great and small vet. Oh, I would love that. Some people call me Jill Harriet. That's so sweet. Okay. How long have you been in practice? Um, I've had my current practice here at this location for 24 years, but I've been practicing for 28 years and in been vet in veterinary medicine for almost 40 years. I was a vet tech for 13 years, a licensed vet tech before I went to veterinary school. So I've been in the field a long time. And Michelle, what's your story? Uh <laughs> Well, I've been involved in the equine industry with um, equine dentistry and have a degree in um, equine science and nutrition as well for, let's see, 33 years now. That is crazy. Um, where did you get your equine nutrition stuff? Um, I went to Northwest College in Wyoming. Now, didn't you also go to like Germany or something like that for your dentistry? For dentistry. And then I got my advanced dentistry through the American School of Equine Dentistry out of Virginia. That's amazing. So how long were you in Ge Germany? Um, I was there for about four months, I believe. That's pretty cool. Did yeah. you enjoy it? I did. It was a really neat experience. A lot of... Uh, very experienced instructors and veterinarians there that Germany's far more advanced in the dentistry area than we are here in the United States. I think, you know, I like to think that I always encourage my horses, my clients to buy German horses because they just seem healthier. Like they're hardy, they were bred for war. And so they just come out like beasts as of like California housewife horses are super <laughs> because. And so, yeah, I always are like, just go to Germany, buy a horse. If you're going to spend that kind of money, it just seems to be better that way. And Dr. Jill and I both went to Cal Poly kind of almost close together. I think Dr. Jill. Yeah. Was there an 86? Oh, I was there before you. I left at 84. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe. Yeah, I think I left at 84. And so that, a long <laughs> it, yes, it was a long time ago. It's hard to believe how fast that went. So yes, Cal Poly. Ooh, ooh. Hey, <laughs> Did, and you went to Pomona or you went to slow, slow. I went yeah. to Pomona for two years and slow for two years. Okay. And then that was it for me. So. You guys, why ozone? What What is ozone first off? And why are you guys excited about ozone? You want me to go first? You go first. Oh so, my gosh. <laughs> so oh, we're really not that polite to each other. We're just on camera. We're just on camera. Actually, we have great senses of humor. So, um, so ozone's a really phenomenal modality. Um, I've been doing it almost 10 years now. Um, and to just to briefly explain kind of a reader's digest version of it, um, ozone is an O3 or an oxygen three molecule. It's a very unstable molecule because it doesn't have, it has an odd number of atoms and everything wants to be even. And so when ozone hits air, um, it's very unstable. It breaks apart into an O2 molecule, which is oxygen and an O1 molecule, which is a free radical, which is very unstable. The O2 molecule oxygenation stays within the system and can super oxygenate tissues. 
versus the O1 molecule has an affinity for anything fungal, bacteria, uh, bacterial, inflammatory, pain management, um, cancer cells, and it basically latches on and will kill that, that toxic cell. And so it's very exciting because it's a natural way to treat a lot of disease by adding oxygenation to that, that patient and killing off some of the other diseases or ailments that the animal has in a gentle way, in a, in a lesser expensive way, and a very helpful way. So it's very appealing. It was a very appealing modality for me to, to learn. Um, and it's just been very attractive. And I feel like it's time that more and more people know about it. It's been out there, but not as much in veterinary medicine. And, and I've used it for the past almost, like I said, 10 years. And I've just seen with my own eyes, the results are phenomenal. Um, the animals get better most of the time. Um, and it's just been an easier, uh, an easier approach to healing, which of course, if you're a homeopathic or a holistic or an acupuncturist, I mean, that's, and that's what we do at my clinic. I'm an integrative veterinarian. We're always looking for something more natural to, um, to utilize on our patients. And what about you, Michelle? Well, my ozone journey started in 2020, I believe. No, 20, 2020. Um, I had a EPM horse and all the veterinarians told me to euthanize him, that there was nothing we could do. He was too far advanced. I had tried some of the pharmaceuticals and a friend of mine said, why don't you try ozone? And I was like, uh, what's that? So she took me to an ozone practitioner in Arizona and I took my horse within the first treatment. I, after about three days, I saw drastic improvements in his mobility. His neurologic symptoms were not as drastic as they were before. Um, spent a lot of time mentoring with her and learning about ozone and how it worked and treating my horse and not staying in Arizona year round, I had to go home. So when I went home, I purchased my own generator and just spent a lot of time on the phone with a veterinarian in Arizona that ozones and then the lady that mentored me. And my horse is great. I'm competing on him, barrel racing on him. He, his titers came back zero the last time we titered him. And he's just been really fantastic to compete on and see the change where he went, you could push him in the hip or pull his tail and he'd almost fall down to now he's running and working and staying sound. So that started my passion for ozone. I was like, all these doctors said euthanize him. I didn't, I went to the ozone modality and that was the beginning of my journey for ozone. That's so exciting. And I love how, um, we got to spend a little time together on Saturday because this is something you guys all know that I'm really, really passionate about eradicating EPM. And so meeting Michelle and working on a couple of the horses that came in the other day that were possibly, mine has been EPM positive and treated multiple times. So he's managed well and he's comfortable in his body. But if I could omit having to treat him one month out of the year annually, plus that might not work anymore. Ozone's a great option for me. So I'm very excited to learn about this today. Um, where the history of ozone, you guys, how did somebody figure this out? It's basically like lightning. Exactly. You know, when you, when it rains, um, you smell ozone afterwards, right? You get that odor um, and that's ozone. That's uh, petrochlor is, is another way of saying that the smell um, of ozone and it's a refreshing smell. Um, and so I believe it was Nikolai Tesla as one of the first people to discover ozone therapy or ozone. Um, it's been around for a very long time. It's been used in Europe for a very long time as standard of care. And in South Africa, um, countries like Cuba, uh, Brazil, um, Spain are very big on using ozone, even in, in people, standard of care in hospitals. 
It's utilized in all kinds of swimming pools, aquariums as disinfectants. Um, and so it's it's been around for a very long time. And for whatever reason, it's taken a long time to, I guess, to share uh, the positivity about it. Because when you talk to some people still, they're like, oh, that's really toxic. You know, and used in the wrong hands, of course, anything can be toxic or, or dangerous. But um, the way we're doing it, it's a medically utilized modality. Um, we are all highly trained individuals. I've been through Dr. Schallenberger's courses. I have a fellowship in human ozone therapy. Um, and so it's not something to take lightly, of course, but there are some courses and I just felt like there wasn't enough information. And so we jumped on and um, started utilizing ozone therapy and trying to spread the word to other veterinarians. And now we have this company where we're going to be utilizing training, hands-on training. I find that I've been to a lot of classes in ozone therapy and a lot of it is theory or lecture. And I don't think the veterinarian really wants that. It's great to have some history, but I went through so many classes and I was frustrated because I just, I would get very little hands-on and so people would buy equipment and it would sit in the box for eons because they didn't know how to use it. Yeah, I think you're one of those people. I Poppy. am one of those people for sure. So, I mean, it's great that, that you buy the equipment, but if it's sitting in the box, you know, it's like taking a pill. If you don't take it out of the vial and take it, what good is it going to do, right? So we, I, I had some frustration and I really wanted to to solve that issue. And so we are now offering training to veterinarians, veterinary staff, and even pet parents who are interested in having a home unit. We want people to understand how to use it so that they can treat their pets at home and that the veterinarians can treat their patients appropriately. That's awesome. I'm really excited that you're including the animal parent, um, especially like for me with the, the multiple EPM type horses that I can get comfortable and confident, maybe not my red horse because he hates needles and it would take maybe two people to run him around the barn aisle to get it done, but, but hopefully we can get him over that and he can get like, I don't know, how often would you treat an EPM horse? Would you do it a few days a week or once a week or once a month? Um, typically for me, when I see EPM horses, it depends on how symptomatic they are, what their no neurological symptoms are. And um, with my horse personally, I did him once a week for, gosh, I don't know, six or eight weeks, somewhere in there. And then I started spreading it out to, you know, every two weeks. And then it went to once a month. And I just do a standard protocol in my barn. Everything gets ozone once a month. And when you say that you're talking intravenous. Yes, DIV, direct IV is the standard method that, that I use. Um, there's a little controversy on there, but it's very, it's very safe for the equine, not small animals. That's so amazing how different they are. So, so what are the different applications we can use ozone for, ladies? Yeah. Jump in first or sure. Okay. <laughs> well, the beautiful thing about ozone is it can be utilized in so many different ways. For example, um, we bubble saline with ozone. So the saline becomes ozonated and that can be given either subcutaneously to the patient or intravenously, which is really nice. Um, it can be, and with that saline, we can use it to flush eyes, for example, if they have an eye infection, if they even have a corneal ulcer, we'll use it sometimes to heal or get oxygenation into the eye quicker. You can use it. Uh, we also can bubble um, regular distilled water. So you can use it as a dental flush and ear flushes and ear cleanings are excellent. You can actually, we have a stethoscope uh, device that goes right into the pet's ears. So you can put the ozone directly into their ears after you've cleaned them for an ear infection because it gets deep into the canals, kills the bacteria. Um, we can use it intravenously um, 
with blood. It's called major autohemotherapy, where we actually pull a sample of blood, mix it with ozone and give it back to the animal. And that works kind of like an autogulous vaccination. That's, that's the theory behind it. There's also minor hemo, autohemotherapy where you take a smaller amount of blood and ozonate it, and you can give it in um, points or acupuncture points. Um, you can give it in stress points. Um, some people use it in tumors or around tumors. Um, and then you can also do rectal ozone. That's another great way of delivering ozone through the system that goes right through. There's a small catheter that we put rectally and we, we push the syringe of ozone directly in, goes into the colon, goes up to the liver, detoxifies the liver rather quickly. And so there's many different ways to use it. We can use it on wound flushes. It's excellent to clean wounds. Um, we can do limb bagging. There's a, a application for that, <clears throat> excuse me, where you can actually put the, um, there's a, a bag that, that comes with the ozone kit um, or you can pump ozone directly into the bag that surrounds the limb. So if there's any kind of um, trauma to that limb or if there's an infection or if there's even a fracture, um, that ozone gets into the system. So there's many different applications to ozone with one machine, which is really cool because you really only need one machine to be able to pick and choose which is the best application for your pet. That's so much fun. And so you're using it saline, ozonated olive oil, gas, direct um, ozonated distilled water and um, rectal. So you're yeah. using it IV, blood. rectal, yeah. blood, um, dental, ears. I've been using it on horses' hooves as a liquid in... Um, well, I have this groovy ozone shower. And so this ozone, it converts tap water or my well water into ozonated water. And then I use that as a hoof boot or I distill it, use distilled water and create a sterile hoof soak, depending on if it's like a big abscess. Like one of my pony, my pony had an abscess right by the coffin bone. So I didn't use the well water. I used the sterilized water on that. And so what wouldn't you use ozone for? What wouldn't you use ozone for? <laughs> <laughs> um, so some people are nervous about inhaling it. Um, if you bubble it through olive oil, it does reduce the toxicity of it to, um, to be inhaled safely. So you can use it for upper respiratory infections, um, nasal infections, nasal tumors. Um, so, but some people have controversy about that. We do not use it direct IV in small animals. And that's kind of a no-no. In fact, when you take Dr. Schallenberger's class, you sign a contract stating that you won't administer it that way because they're of course worried about blood clots, um, embolisms, things of that nature, but um, people do it. It's just, it's, it's looked upon or frowned upon. So we stick with mixing it with blood, giving it back either with saline or blood. Um, but in horses, they could tolerate it. They're a much larger animal um, and they're getting a smaller amount, but it's very effective. Maybe Michelle can expand on that a little why that happens, why you can give it and it's safe. Maybe you're saying about the bubbles or something, the size of the bubbles and well, we use a very small gauge needle. Um, and now I've talked to other practitioners who don't. They use larger needles. I choose to use 25 to IV with because it's so small that it breaks the gas bubbles down. And if you, the research has been done at, where they have had a, a pony, a small pony that had cancer and needed to be euthanized. They tried to do it with an air embolism and they put over two liters of air in that pony and it didn't phase it. Um, you, you look at the blood volume of a horse is about 8% of its body weight. So that's, that's pretty large for, for a horse. And it seems, um, some people will say, oh, use ozonated saline. We have done over 2,500 treatments on horses and never had a problem with the direct IV, uh, phenomenal results with it on horses. Now I'm 
kind of curious to try to test it out on bovine to see, you know, how, how that would work, but on, on the horses, it's, it's phenomenal. That's so exciting. And um, you know, bovine there's, they utilize and they're trying to utilize it, utilize it more and more for flushing the teats, mastitis mm -hmm. so that they can get away from antibiotics. And it is very beneficial for that as well. I what have about allergies, you guys? What about auto, like overactive immune system issues, like autoimmune issues and allergies? Yeah, absolutely. You can mix it with blood um, and ozonate it and do acupuncture in the points for allergy. So that's a minor autohemotherapy. Um, you could certainly do IV. There's also another, another portion of this that we didn't discuss, and it's called UVBI. It's ultraviolet biophotonic therapy, where you actually, we usually describe ozone as oxygen on steroids, but UVBI is ozone on steroids. We're getting a little funny background noise. Are you guys, can Sorry. you hear me? Is everything okay? Yeah, yes, just a bunch sorry. of dogs barking. Oh, that's what it is. I was like, what is that? Yeah, somebody came and we, yeah, they went a little crazy. Sorry about that. That's so, okay. You know, do you sterilize your tools with ozone? Like, do you wash your clinic down with it? You can. They actually have some devices now that are handheld, like ozone sprayers. We actually have an ozone shower that's hooked up in our clinic. Um, so we bathe the animals in it. And so if they're having skin conditions, we can actually give them ozonated baths. Um, there are plenty of people put it in a, in a water bottle and squirt it on the counters. The key is, is ozone, de ozone deteriorates about 50% per hour. So you can't leave it sitting there in a bottle all day long and expect it to be full. Although if you, if you do refrigerate it, like sometimes we send people home who live far away, say they have an animal with a wound or something of that nature. We send it home in an ozone safe bottle for them and they can take it home and flush that wound for three days. There's still ozone in there. It just may not be as potent as the initial um, time we've made it. And then, you know, it, it, it disintegrates after time, but at least it's still in there and you can smell it. It's still pretty, pretty strong. So as long as there's a smell to your ozone, it's still active. I think, I think that's pretty true. I, you know, I can't say a hundred percent because unless you have a, something to measure your ozone with, you don't know the concentration in there, but I think that you are, you're pretty safe to say there's still some ozone in there. I don't, what do you think about that? I, I think so. And some of the research that I've read says that even freezing it in an ice cube tray will extend the life, of, you know, keep, keep it active for a little bit longer if you have clients that you need to send it home with. And it does still, I've opened jar after four or five days and it still does have a slight ozone odor. Yeah, I've done um, at least 24 hours and it's I still felt a, like a little tingle to it so it's a tingly thing you guys yeah when you mm -hmm. put it on your face or on your skin you can kind of feel like a, a little pinpricky type thing depending on the potency and on these machines you can adjust the potency now it's safe for all animals like I chickens are fine you wouldn't do a fish right I wouldn't imagine that Oh, you could, yeah. Um, a lot of aquarium. I know that sounds crazy, but uh, you could actually do uh, a lot of these big aquariums are starting to utilize it in their in the facilities for cleaning tanks for uh, for the exchange of oxygenation. And so, say you're doing surgery on a fish. I mean, we obviously take them out of water. We keep them hydrated. You could absolutely add a little bit into their tanks or kind of. Um, depending on if they're salt water or not, you could use saline if it's a salt water fish that's been ozonated or just regular water if it's fresh water to keep them hydrated while you're doing surgery. Um, it's certainly not gonna hurt them at all. Um, the other thing we did, I forgot to mention was they do make um, oil-based suppositories that's got uh, ozone trapped inside of it. And there are some also some capsules that people take orally as well um, for ozone, you know, ozonation or or, I guess for immune system um, issues, some people do take it orally. Um, the rectal is excellent because that goes right in, of course, kind of like the rectal ozone, but 
people can buy those and keep them in the freezer. And so it traps the ozone in there. And then once it hits the warm body part, it dissipates and releases the ozone into their system. I'm so glad you brought that up because there are some ozone products on the market. And I know that you are also developing some products. So eardrops, eye drops, and then the rectal suppositories. Uh, that's easy for pet owners right. to have just on the shelf and use yeah. and it's it's stable toothpaste you know there's ozone dentists out there a lot of um it, you have to look them up but they've gone through extensive training they've gone through a lot of coursework um in ozone therapy to treat their patients and in fact i was at my dentist last week and i said you know do you use ozone therapy and they're like no we don't use it it's so funny you asked that because we had a client from south africa that came in and requested us to do an ozone flush on their mouth and we we're like, we don't, we don't know what that is. And she said, well, that's standard of care in South Africa. That's so common. That's what the dentists do. They flush our mouths and use ozone. And they actually have little cups that go over the teeth that they, they can um, impregnate that sore tooth with ozone. And it will actually help with cavities, infections. Um, we use it in the clinic when we're doing dentistry. We actually do an ozone flush on everybody who's had a dental cleaning. Um, because it's just, it's antibacterial. It cleans their mouth out. It gets rid of all the germs and such. So it's a very helpful uh, modality as well in dentistry. They're now, also using it in root canals too. Yeah. When, when they drill out the root, they're using it to sterilize that before they put the crown on. So I've actually had that I, was, since you're done. <laughs> I was working, I was drinking my ozone water and you guys, I noticed that it kind of like loosens some some glue on some of my fillings. So maybe not use it if you know you have something that can dissolve under ozone. So ozone kind of dissolves plastic, right? Yes, it's yes. it's it's very damaging to plastics, um, rubber, metals, sometimes mm -hmm. it'll wear away at. Um, so silicone is usually your friend with ozone. It doesn't really dissolve that. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it can be toxic to or break down other materials. So you do need to be cautious. When we use the ozone machine, we are using silicone tubing. Um, we have all sorts of little um, connectors and things like that that are resistant to the ozone. So they're not going to be damaged. Yes. And I noticed um, when I, I actually ozone gas my house occasionally, and I'll notice like the trash bags are just like paper thin by the end of that ozonation. So it's pretty fascinating. I did my car a couple of times and I think it actually jacked some of the, the things on the inside of my car, like maybe the valves or something. I was like, oh, I think I'll quit that. So yes, <laughs> just, just know that you could be destroying things too. So be careful with whatever you use your ozone with, if you're going to use ozone. And do you use it with multiple things? Like Michelle, you actually mixed colloidal silver and ozone the other day, and I was shocked about that. I've I've found that ozone with you know certain things like colloidal silver, um, some essential oils are are fine to combine, and you actually get greater results because it's not. I don't feel that ozone's a, a miracle thing. It it's used in conjunction with other healing modalities. And what about you, Dr. Jill? Do you mix it or do you just use it straight up? Um, I do mix it. There's another modality that we also have. There's so many things uh, we didn't mention. Prolozone, right? Um, prolozone is, or there's prolotherapy, and that is without ozone, or prolozone is with ozone. And what that is, Poppy, is um, we take certain nutrients or um, injectables. So for example, we use dextrose and procaine, which helps if it's a ligament issue, it will actually help break it down to a point of causing some inflammation. So the body reacts to the inflammation to heal. And so we mix procaine, dextrose, I'll take some tramiel or B vitamins. Uh, Biotian is another uh, really good addition, which is like a C mineral. And we can mix those things together, inject it in. Some people inject in, I prefer not to in a joint, 
I'll inject around a joint because ozone is fascinating. It finds where it needs to go. And so when I first learned ozone or prolozone therapy, we were taught that it needed to go into a joint to be effective. Well, animals don't, you, you end up wanting to have to sedate them. And my thought was, I don't want to inflict pain on an animal to decrease pain. That seemed sort of counterproductive. I want to do something that's not going to hurt them. Um, and also a lot of holistic vets don't even do anything with anesthesia or, or any of that. So we found that through time and practice, just injecting around the joint is just as effective as it is going into the joint. And therefore you don't have to sedate, you don't have to, um, in, you don't have to infiltrate a joint because that's a little nerve wracking. And then, um, so those are some things that we can mix with it as well. Yeah. And um, also you, you use it in cancer therapy. Yes, absolutely. Um, you can inject a tumor and circle the dragon, just like you do in acupuncture, where you go around the tumor. Um, you can infuse straight gas to that. You can do a lot of people use saline. Some people use blood. They do the blood and the ozone together. You can add biocean into that. I try not to add too many other things into when I'm treating tumors. I just find that the blood and the ozone is pretty much enough. But when I'm treating joints or pain, that's when I start adding things in. Um, the what UVBI, part, oh, go what's ahead. What's Biocean? Biocean is a sea mineral and it's the same salinity as our body. So it's basically giving us um, pure minerals. It's a, it's a sterilized salt water from Canada. And okay, we, I thought you kept saying semen. And I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> Semen roll. <laughs> I'm like a semen roll. That doesn't sound delicious. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh my gosh. Min roll. Sorry. It's a min roll. I was like, wow, that's new technology. <laughs> oh my gosh. Interesting you say that. Um, because I had a case, oh gosh, probably five years ago, because they are also now starting to utilize it interperitoneal. And we're giving it intraperitoneal for cancer cases. If there's an abdominal tumor or something that's not surgically and we can't remove. I had a dog of my own that had a heart tumor. It had a pericardial sac tumor. And the cardiologist did an ultrasound and said, this dog is gone in 72 hours. You'll be lucky if she, I don't know how you found it, but this dog's dead. So what I ended up doing through, and I'll, I will give credit where credit's due, is Dr. Margot Roman is my mentor, okay? She's amazing. And she thinks way outside of the box. And sometimes I was like, whoa, this lady's got to be off, off this planet, right? Thinking about it. But the things that she does and says are so amazing that when you try them and they work, you're like, this lady's really got it going on. She's really brilliant. Um, and I think she walks to a different vibration because she's just so intense, but so intellectual, very big into ozone therapy. And she's really the reason I got so interested in, I went to a lecture years ago that I listened to and I was just like blown away. I'm like, there is no way one thing can treat all these different diseases. But then when you break it down and you look, it's just so, it's simple. It's oxygenation, right? Cancer doesn't like oxygen. Bacteria doesn't like oxygen. Mm -hmm. I mean, so all these different infl inflammation doesn't like oxygen. So all these things that you can utilize ozone with to treat, it is, it's a very appealing modality to me. Um, and so she was really a mentor to me. I had this boxer that had a, um, a heart tumor and she said, you know what? The dog's heart was starting to fill up. She goes, drain, drain the fluid off the heart ozonate that fluid and give it back to the dog in its heart around the pericardial sac. And I was like, this lady is nuts. There's no way. But I was losing my dog and I was desperate and there was nothing. It was an inoperable tumor. So what's, you know, what are you going to look? You're not going to lose anything, right? Exactly. This is what we can, I always say you get to be greatest when it's the darkest. Yeah. And she lived another nine months happily. Wow. Um, with no issues. I mean, running around like a regular dog. And it wasn't until that nine month mark where she just decided I'm done. I don't want to be here anymore. That's amazing. So 
ACL tears, your or cruciate ligaments yep. and yes. all of that. And how's your recovery on that? If people follow the protocol, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> People don't follow the protocol, not so excellent. Okay, so I see a lot of cruciate repairs <clears throat> or a lot of cruciate dogs that have been diagnosed. They come in, I tell people a minimum of six to eight weeks treatment, minimum. <clears throat> Doesn't mean you have to do it every, you don't have to do all of it on, you know, on every visit, but we need to see the dog at once a week for six to eight weeks to assess what's going on. And what happens, <clears throat> a lot of times it's the human error. It's not the healing. They let their dog go out and chase a squirrel or jump off a retaining wall right halfway through treatment. And now you get, well, this treatment isn't really working very well <laughs> when they've already started putting weight back on the leg. So it's, it's a little bit frustrating because people see it working. They let their dog go back to the way they were going before. And then we, <clears throat> excuse me, we end up right back where we started from. Yeah. So, and I've had multiple times, but it does help. It is pretty phenomenal, I will say. And sometimes I use it just with straight ozone. Sometimes I'll do prolozone. Um, I don't usually pull the prolozone guns out until I see that it's not responding. Um, that's not my first go-to. I like to start a little gentler than that and kind of mark, work my way up because Sometimes you don't need all that. Sometimes you could just get away with doing a little bit less or putting them on herbs. It's now don't don't get me wrong. It's not just ozone. It's it's a combination of things that we utilize as well. It's not always about just ozone. I mean, these dogs are going home on physical therapy, herbals, shockwave therapy, laser therapy, chiropractics, um, adequan injections. I mean, all those things, PEMF play into it depending on which modality we want to use with the ozone. Yeah, so that's what, that's part of the fun thing about your clinic is you always have new new tools coming. So you just got a la a new laser or and then red light and you've got all these other modalities going on. So you have your Chinese herbs, you have your acupuncture, you have your hyperthermia yes. machine, which is really fun. Um I got to play with that the other day. And, and that was kind of a, a total trip, but um, things I've never seen before. So it's just a blast. And I love that you're passionate about new things. So you're always looking for something even better, Dr. Jill. And I commend you for that. It's so awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I really love veterinary medicine. I love the medicine but I love finding things that have been around that have been underutilized that are actually successful. And especially in people, um, we just overlook things. Everything, everybody wants to just give a pill and it's not just about giving a pill. It's that's the other thing. It's mind, body, and spirit. It's the whole animal. It's the whole person connected to that animal. It's difficult to heal an animal when the person who's owning that animal isn't healthy themselves. They have to be one with each other because that animal relies on that person. And if you don't give the medications or you don't give the herbs that's been recommended, how are they ever going to get better? They don't open the jar and help themselves. And so it's, it's a full, it's the full circle, I guess, if you will. Now, I remember a story you told me about um, limb bagging a whole chicken, like you like did it from the neck down and all these mites or lice or something fell off what was that yeah, super cool um so we had a chicken that came in and uh oh we got stalled out is it me or is it are we back yet so i don't know if i'm it looks like Jill's still going and I'm the one frozen. Oh, there we are. Are we back? I am back. I my Wi-Fi swapped to my <laughs> my other Wi-Fi. So sorry about that, you guys. Let me get my my face back on here and let me change my um spotlight. So we can view this. There, you are. there I am. 
Thank you, you guys. Sorry about that. Yeah, I have. Um, it jumped over to my hotspot instead of my friend's house's Wi-Fi. So that was oops. Um, okay, so we talked about the chicken. I actually have photos um, loaded in your website. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we share that? And do you want to talk about that ozone shower? Because I'm digging that. Yeah, so uh, there, there are a couple different sizes. There's a small one that we have at the clinic um, that we use. It hooks right up to the sink. Um, we had a plumber come in and take care of it and just put it in there. But it's really cool because you have ozone at your disposal for flushing wounds, for um, cleaning, bathing. It's right there. We clean bowls with it. We can flush the sink out. So it's all dis disinfected. It's way easier. The one you have is a, it's a very large unit and, and it could be utilized in different areas of the home as well for like washing your clothes. But the way you have it hooked up, which is so cool, um, it's in your barn and you can wash bowls with it, horses with it. The only negative thing that I have found so far is that you cannot heat up ozone water. It will kill the molecules and destroy them. So you do need to be mindful of the winter times if you're bathing a horse, but it is fantastic for hydrotherapy, for you know cooling off limbs. You can do that. You can use the ozone bath for that. Um, I like it too, because you can actually hose out your stalls, um, clean, you know, clean the floors. You're just basically washing it with water that's ozonated. So you have a, you have, you're sanitizing, right? Super easy. Yeah. I'm actually trying to find my video on that so I can share. So sorry, you guys, I'm just like scrolling my, my, um, phone. And so anything else, Michelle, you want to add to this conversation before we go to case studies? Um, I think we're we have seen a lot of success with like bow tendons, uh, ring bone horses, a, a, a great deal of success, um, career changing success. And with, with ring bone and, and side bone? And like bow tendons, Excellent. navicular. Um, the most, I haven't done, seen a lot of navicular horses, but a huge amount of ring bone horses. Uh, we had an NFR cap roping horse that had been to the NFR seven times, came up last spring with ring bone, three-legged, couldn't walk. And they did a like a three-month protocol on um, treating that horse's ring bone. And he was back at the NFR this year competing. So it was really quite amazing to see um, I'm trying to get the owner to do some interviews about it, to, you know, to share his success. And so hopefully we'll be able to share some of that publicly soon. Michelle, do you go to like rodeos or horse shows and do it right there on site? Is this something you would do to as a performance enhancement right before going jumping or running barrels or something like that? Or is that not a good idea? Um, actually, on the on race horses, performance horses, we've been doing it about 48 hours before they perform. Um, it oxygenates those red blood cells, helps, you know, this goes hard. We know that our soft tissue injuries are amplified by lack of oxygen. And so when those horses systems or any animal are oxygenated, you have less of a chance for injuries. So, you know, and it's not drug enhancement, it's not blood doping, it's nothing. And I've used it on a lot of racehorses and seen fabulous success for those horses coming across the finish line to the winter circle, not even really breaking a sweat because they have the oxygen in their systems that they need to utilize to perform. Um, it is safe pre-performance. Okay. That's, I mean, that's pretty cool. I don't, it almost feels like cheating a little bit, you know, but if you're going to be smart about it, be smart about it. So it, is it cheating or are we giving them their best advantage to have less injuries because you're going to see less soft tissue injuries with 
with any system, any humans, horses, whatever, if we're oxygenated, our systems are oxygenated, the blood has the oxygen it needs, the, the mitochondria producing more ATP, so cellular energy. And, and it's not artificial. It's not a drug. It's not, you know, like Lance Armstrong blood doping. It's, <laughs> and it's a natural substance in our universe. So, you know, I think uh, I would hope that in the future, people will be more open-minded to that and realize that it, it, we are preventing injuries in these animals, soft tissue injuries, or trying to prevent them. Well, also the recovery. So performance recovery, stress, um, pathogen infections. I, I believe all diseases leave toxins. So you're flushing out all those toxins. Now, if you were, if you're drinking the ozone, like I literally let my horses drink out of the ozone shower and I can see the iridology pop. And then we, we watch the iridology get really clear with the IV ozone too. So we know it's hitting the brain at that point, because for it to mark on the eye, it has to be hitting the brain too. So I'm wondering like PSSM and Cushing's, all those issues um, oxygenating the body would just be better for all, right? I feel, I feel so, you know, that we're oxygen. Dr. Frank Schallenberger talks about in one of his books, why we get cancer in its lack of oxygen in our bodies. And yeah. so he feels that if the body's properly oxygenated, then you're going to have a, a lower, how, how do I word that? A lower risk of cancer? Yeah. Lower risk, lower, you know, your immune system has been primed <clears throat> to be stronger um you have again more oxygenation in there so things aren't going to be as as readily absorbed i guess into the system or the oxygenation may kill them off or you know create a stronger immune system and there was something else i wanted to bring up when you drink the ozone um dr jill we talked about killing even the good bacteria in your gut but then you believe somebody told you that it actually creates a better level of bacteria eventually. Is that true? Yeah, because it, it has an affinity for the negative, not mm -hmm. the positive. So it's going to only go for the toxic, um, the toxic organisms in the system, which is very interesting. It has the ability to, to figure that out and go for the, the, the negative versus the positive so I, yeah so, I actually limb bagged um I had a a foot like a inflammation bacterial infection in my foot and I stuck a trash bag on it and limb bagged it and it was crazy that a, the infection turned like black it was almost like peely and necrotic and black and then all the other tissue was normal it was so bizarre how it only affected the the infection. Yeah. We also use it. I mean, there's so many ways that we can use it. I use it in bladders a lot of times with urinary tract infections. We can actually, um, we empty the bladder and then infuse straight ozone into the bladder. It will attack the bacteria, bacteria if there's a urinary tract infection in the bladder itself, as well as, you know, because some people want to, um, they're waiting to get a culture or they don't want to use antibiotics, you can infiltrate the bladder with straight ozone or ozonated saline to help kill off bacteria and inflammation, which is really cool. It is cool because you're not creating super bugs and you're not just adding layer upon layer of antibiotics. So that is amazing. Do you guys want me to share your case studies? Uh, Michelle, I think it's mostly you. I will. I um, just mentioned that I think somebody asked earlier, can you use it in any animal? And it's the, the answer is pretty much yes. I've used it in guinea pigs, rabbits, hedgehogs, birds, um, depending on what, what direction we're using in goat, sheep, pigs, um, you know, of course, dogs and cats, tortoises. I had a tortoise with a, a leg that got ripped off and we ozonated it pretty much every day. We let them sit in ozonated soaks. Um, 
And I mean, it's, it's helped all of these different animals in different ways. So this is your ozone shower for the barn, the equine shower. And I use it to disinfect everything. It's um, fun to look at <laughs> for one thing. <laughs> and then, if we got to get our cute label on there. We haven't done that yet. <laughs> and, and it makes everything look new. It's bizarre because the dirt doesn't mix with water like regular water. Like the ozonated water, it suspends the dirt. Um, or it separates it like oil and and vinegar, but it doesn't mix in. It's such a, a bizarre thing. So that's so cool. That looks awfully clean. <laughs> I know. And and some of those things were new, but not all of them. Whoops, I went to the wrong. Let me get back to my messages. And so here's a hoof thing that I did is my horse started with a hoof trauma. Um, he actually did that hoof trauma in the summer and I gave him a homeopathic remedy for a little tiny bit of white line starting and this blew out. And so this was the first couple days and then the ferret came out and opened it up and I did a bunch of flushes. So I started soaking in ozone. So I was just doing um, the, the distilled ozone water in a Ziploc bag and was sticking their feet in there for about 10 minutes. And it just made it look so clean and pretty. So that was in seven days. It made the hoof grow so fast that this grew out in six weeks, um, which my farrier was totally blown away by. And then let me see our next, whoops, I went the wrong way. It's a fun video though. And then this is his hoof where the white line went and there was some hoof rot. And so then we cleaned it up and started soaking it and it was drawing all this stuff out of there. So um, I've had the pleasure of soaking a couple horses and here's Michelle on Saturday doing an IV gas infused. What do you call it? DIV? Yeah, DIV. Direct intravenous ozone therapy. That horse doesn't look too excited about it, <laughs> but he was such a good boy. Want to explain that or? Um, what we're doing there is just just a direct direct IV. Um, he it, he had, for an old guy. That guy's thirty five years old. And so I think he handled all of it amazingly and was a willing participant in our, you know, training and to educate and how, how to do the DIV. Um, I usually use between 360 and 480 cc's depending on the severity or condition of the horse. And then the concentration level is also dependent on what's going on with the horse, whether we do high dose or low dose. All right. And then we did also a um a tear duct flush with ozone. So there's Michelle shoving it up the the sinus tear duct opening and then you'll see it pop out of the eye. Let's see it a second time. This is a, a lacrimal flush and he just had goopy eyes. So we opted to um, go ahead and use the ozone, uh, a very low concentration to flush that lacrimal duct. And he, he, wasn't, he wasn't sedated at all. So he was amazingly great for all of this. He was such a neat old man. Yeah, he's a cool horse. Very sweet. And you, again, you can use that to flush eyes as well when they come into the clinic, the small animals, you know, if they have goopy eyes or if they have an eye infection, I always clean them first with that uh, before I start, you know, sending them home. I, they always get cleaned up with some ozonated saline. And that was a muscle injection. Yes, this mare had extremely short. Um, sore withers a lot of pain in there in that first rib so we went ahead and just gave her just a little bit to help relieve that muscle pain and free up her shoulders it's a it's a really wonderful pain reliever 
Let me see if I can open this up. And this is something you sent me. Yes, this horse, you can see he's ripped half of his eyelid off. And um, we, the veterinarian sutured the eyelid and then uh, that horse received direct IV treatments and lavaging. I would just wipe down the eyelid with ozonated saline. And you can see in the bottom picture that he doesn't even have a scar. Like the the doctor said, I can't remember which eye it was <laughs> because you, you can't tell. It heal it heals so well. That's so cool. Yeah, it looks great, Michelle. And then whoops, where else? We have more. Um, this horse, we don't really know what she did came in from the pasture and you can see that went from basically her um sternum to her elbow and it was sutured and it did dehist so once it dehist we just lavaged that twice a day with ozonated saline and then applied i actually pulled olive oil out of my bubbler my my oil bubbler and would just rub on on and around that to you know keep it moist and it was in the summer to keep the bugs off of it and it it healed quite well the bottom I, I believe it's the bottom um left hand or right hand photo you can't even really tell that anything had happened to that mare that's pretty cool and then what about this that was during the healing process. It looks so different. It does. This this one, the the one with um, where it's starting to heal, and you can see the granulation. That was during the summer, and then the last picture was taken this winter sometime. I just um, asked for a photo of that just so we could have a comparison. But it really is the same horse. Um, what's the time frame here? Oh gosh that I can't remember. Um, I believe that we lavaged her and, and doctored her for about a month and a half. Now this little guy came from Mississippi and he was loaded in parasites. You can see just how awful he looks. And I had dewormed and dewormed. This is my actual, one of my personal horses. And I dewormed and dewormed him and he was not getting better. I power packed. I did. I tried all kinds of things. And finally, I just said, you know what? I'm just going to DIV this cult like every two weeks and then went once a month. And you can just see how he bloomed out of that or, you know, he just looked so ratty and terrible. So you can literally kill parasites with ozone DIV. I think there's some controversy there. Yeah. Some people say yes, some people say no, but um, I've had a number of horses, my own personal horses, you know, horses that I bought that were just a mess. And with the just doing DIV, the massive changes in them, I can't make claims one way or another, but the photos speak for themselves, you know, and how good he looks. I know the ectoparasites, if you bag them a lot of times, like the chicken. Um, we've had several animals that have been infested with topical or ectoparasites, and it does it does nail them pretty good. So, I mean, like fleas and ticks, Doctor Jill. Um, yeah, I don't know about the ticks. Um, I would assume that you know you're if you're pumping ozone to these creatures and they're breathing it in, it's it's going to be toxic to them. I mean, um, that's why we don't breathe it, right? We bubble it through oil or whatever it is. But I mean, I discovered that when I did that chicken, I was like blown away because I had no idea. And I did it on a rabbit too, I think that had mites. So you can use it for ear mites. Um, we just pump the, you know, again, the little stethoscope in there. So yeah, it does, it does have an effect on parasites. Does that mean you can stop using dewormer or checking your stool samples? No, you need to always check your stool samples you know, stay on a routine dewormer if you're in an infested area. I always, I'm a huge advocate of keeping our animals as clean as possible because I think in this country are very complacent about parasites. 
and they're all over the world. And I've traveled quite a bit. And pretty much anywhere other than the US you go, you can literally walk into a pharmacy and buy dewormer. Um, in this country, it's not so much. So I, I check fecals constantly on my patients. I think if, if I was to choose a vaccination for an older dog over a fecal sample, I would take the fecal sample. Um, of course, I'm not a big vaccinator anyway, but um, it's important to find out if there's a parasite, especially like I've seen with my cancer patients, a lot of the times we'll do a fecal, people are like, why are you doing a fecal? Come up positive with Giardia. I mean, some of these animals' immune systems are so low, they, are, they have these parasites in their system. And so it's important to get rid of those parasites so that the cancer has more opportunity to react to the treatment versus trying to deworm and mess with the immune system. And right, so and the body, the if the body's busy fighting off worms and, and just trying to thrive, it right. takes, it really exhausts the body to be fighting like that. Right. Yeah. And then Michelle, did you have another one? Let me no, see. This one that you have up right now is that was a non-healing wound that, that injury happened in June and you can see what it looked like in January. It was a non-healing wound and that mare got DIV once a week. And we did, I went to dry dressing. So I soaked um, four by four gauze in ozonated saline and applied that to that mare, changed the dressing every day for oh, probably a month. And then I started going every other day and you can see how, you know, the difference in the granulation, no crab flesh. That is one of my favorite things about ozone is you do not get crab flesh. And that's huge because we know in leg injuries, that's like knocks on our door all the time. That's amazing. And is there anything else? Let me see. Oh, the last was... photo was the right there. Your last photo. Whoops. Doesn't want to show. That was after um, two months of what to dry dressings and how, how well that wound is closing. That's exciting. And I think that's all I had. Um, and there's some questions in the chat. And if you guys who are also on the Zoom call want to um, show your little faces, you can, you can ask questions. So Julie wanted to know, can you use it for plug? Placenta, placentitis on a mare? I don't have much experience with placentitis. Um, I do know that there's a extensive research on endometriitis and um, they are using it to flush, flush mares that have um, bacterial and fungal infections and having you know great success with that. Um, one of the veterinarians that I work with in Colorado, we did did a few flushes on a mare that cultures kept coming back positive and trying to get that mare bred. It was a, an AI recipient. So uh, they are using it a lot in mares and for reproduction issues. That's great. And Rocky Mountain spotted fever, Maureen Zafsky. For small animal or horses or I think small animals I'm, you know, I'm not any, seeing Rocky uh, Mountain spotted fever in horses but I don't think we have that in California so much it's more Colorado I, I would think right? right and in small animal in Colorado I have not treated a case of that in a very 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 long time because we live here and we don't see it but I will tell you that it is extremely beneficial for Lyme disease. Yes. Um, and I would definitely use the same protocol for Lyme disease on Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Absolutely. You know, it's not going to hurt any kind of autoimmune disease, any kind of anemia. It will help with anemia conditions as well. Um, and so, you know, there's a multiple, obviously it may not be the only modality, but I would, I would probably hit that animal up with the UVBI. I think that's even better. Um, but you don't, you know, if you don't have that equipment and you just have the ozone machine, certainly, even if you sent people home with doing rectal ozone, 
daily on that animal, that could be very beneficial to help with it. Jen, did you have a question? I mean, if you wanna I, mute. I see someone asked about Lyme on there and we did treat with U, UVBI two horses that were, well, the Cornell test said we're positive for Lyme, even though in Colorado, they say we don't have it. <laughs> and I think those horses are doing quite well now. That's so funny. Oh, they treat people with Lyme disease. That's And that's another big reason that I was so attracted to it is I am a Lyme disease survivor mm -hmm. and I've had ozone therapy through a human doctor and it made a big difference in how I felt. So it is very, very much high on the list for ozone therapy to be treating Lyme disease. Jen, how are you? I am good. I'm so sorry. I have just been so spread thin. But ozone, I myself have gotten it many, many, many injections um, for pain and inflammation, and, and it has totally helped me. And I just really believe that, you know, we're all mammals. And, you know, and when we do this, like to ourselves, we understand it better, kind of like essential oils. We understand it better of how it affects us and how it will it ultimately affect that animal too. And so it just is, just is incredible. It's an incredible tool. I'm not really obsessed with it, but I totally believe in it because I have been there, done that. And it just, it's through this, it's kind of making me have a little bit more of an aha because I am having some other issues and I've been fucking going back into my nature path and doing it. But now I'm thinking that's probably what I need to do. So I really hats off to you gals for trying to help me uh you know Thank and you. i really about like the ring bone i put a horse down because of ring bone you know because i it was ranching and you know i mean feasibility just weren't there and i was just sick he was most bulletproof horse ever and still brings tears to my eyes and and i'm just like this is so wonderful all the different things that um they're finding now um, the ozone and Poppy, you keep coming up with different things all the time. Hats off to you because it just makes life better for animals. Thank you. Oh, our pleasure. This is why we do this. To, I know. To build awareness. Hey, somebody's asking what's a treatment cost and, and if you wanted to purchase a machine. Uh, the treatment depends on which one you're choosing. Like, for example, rectal ozone can be anywhere from $45 a, a treatment, um, upwards of $60. I don't know what they charge in horses, or they don't really do a lot of rectal in horses. The, um, the uh, uh, UVBI can be higher priced, anywhere from $500 to $800. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, that one's a little bit higher. Um, the... Uh, the ozone injections can range anywhere from $45 and upwards of $125. Prolozone, typically about $250 because you're using different um, injectables, but it just varies on the, on the patient. Wound care, ear flushes like we do, we charge, I think, $10 extra to do ozone ear flushes, and then another $35 to do a five-minute intense treatment on their ears to kill the bacteria, which really isn't that much when you think about it. The machines, the in-home units run anywhere varying depending on what you where you get them. I've seen them as low as 700 and I've seen them as high as 1200. So I think ours is gonna go for somewhere between eight and 900. Um, it has extra parts and such to it. So it, they're not really expensive. And when you think about that, like if you're going and doing rectal ozone every day, that's gonna add up. So it, the machine will pay for itself in no time. You can ozonate water or saline with it. So you can drink the water, your animal can drink the water. That's what's really great. So it comes in quite handy and they're nice. They come in like a little carrying case and they're, you know, they're not too voluminous, um, easy to use. And they come with um, like a, th a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one instruction as well. Now, Dr. Jill, you're having an event at my house <laughs> in a month. <laughs> Let's yes. talk about that. Yes, at my house too, actually. Yes. Um, Michelle and I and a couple other of our team members are going to be offering a training class hands-on 
um, mostly to veterinarians, veterinary technicians, and then people in the industry. But uh, we will also open up some of these other courses to uh, pet parents. But the course is geared towards, uh, we have some really cool guest lecturers too that are gonna be coming in. Dr. Margo is going to be giving a presentation on microbiome. Um, Dr. Pretham is going to be giving a presentation on hyperthermia. And then I have Dr. Costa who will be talking about mistletoe therapy because what we're trying to do is not just introduce, introduce ozone therapy, we're trying to introduce other modalities that are complementary to ozone therapy that are beneficial and again, not harmful, very easy to use, not too expensive, kind of check all the boxes. So we'll have a training here. There's a small animal tract and there's a large animal tract, whoever chooses which one. I'll be teaching the small animal tract. Michelle will be treat, treating uh, or teaching the um, equine large animal tract with you, Poppy. And so depending on which direction people wanna go in, um, we will show them all of these different modalities probably with the exception of prolozone. If we have time, we'll get into that. Um, but you should be able to walk out of that class and start utilizing that machine um, in your practice, in your home, um, helping you save cost for pet parents, helping build your practice if you're a veterinarian. It's, it's a pretty positive all the way around. And if you go to our website, you'll see we're a really positive-minded company. We like laughter and we know that animals get sick and it's serious and it's sad. So we try to stay on a more positive um, approach because your attitude is everything. It trickles downhill to your animals. It's very important to stay on a happier level, um, stay positive. And so um, we believe in laughter and happiness to go along. Even if it's a sad situation, bringing up the positive is very helpful and beneficial for healing. Uh, so so here, here's the website. I brought it on. Um, Regeno3onevet.com. And if you guys are interested in the training, here's the portal to join or get more information on the training. So it's Friday and Saturday. Now you guys actually said maybe on Sunday too, right? Did that change? Um, I don't know if we'll do Sunday because a lot of people will be leaving. We'll probably just hang out and have a, we could have a group discussion um, or if people have questions or we can go over other things. I'm not sure what, what Sunday brings. I know that a lot of people want, want to fly back home or go back home after Friday and Saturday. Um, we are going to have future trainings for sure um, and continuing education in, in other areas of ozone therapy, but this is a kind of a beginner's um, training session. And so, for example, Michelle will be showing how to do DI, direct DIV. The people that are registered in the class will be able to actually do hands-on. We want you to handle the equipment. We don't wanna just show you how to do it. We want you to feel it, understand it, so that you can get the benefits of that. Because I, again, I've been through so many of these classes where they just demonstrate that you, or you get to do it once. We have an entire day of hands-on. So the second day is all hands-on. The first day is about half lecture with guest people. And then the rest of the day is all hands-on. So we have a day and a half of hands-on. And we've been very conscientious about that. We want our veterinarians to go back to their practices and be able to utilize this modality immediately. So, And I forgot to show that. Let me do this again, you guys, is you actually have like a uh, veterinarian database. So you, if you guys want to try to find a vet that is ozone trained in your neighborhood, um, here is this ozone veterinarian area and you can just scroll through that. But there's not that many. Not yet. But not yet. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like laser poppy. You know, 20 years ago, everybody kind of poo-pooed laser. They thought it was voodoo. And, you know, I was one of the only kids on the block that did it. I got very busy. People traveled from all over. And now it's like every vet clinic pretty much has some type of laser therapy. Um, and so we're hoping that this spreads because, again, it's so beneficial. It's so helpful. No drugs, you know, um, lots of handling and loving. It's a loving way to treat patients. And so, you know, it's it's a win-win. 
and we're hoping that it spreads. We spread the word. It's it, now is the time. It's time to get it out there and let people know how valuable it is. So exciting. Jen, did you have a question? Uh, yes, I do. So um, I want to talk about the rectum. Um, you see, John, at do your animals kind of like see you coming like, I don't want to do this today? Is there a lot of discomfort to it? I can't, I keep, I can't help but think about Peter. Peter and his little Peter, dog. Peter and his dog. You know Peter Shankarelli, Dr. Dill. You've heard about Peter. You don't actually know him yet, but I'm sure you'll meet him one day. Yeah. But he is he is the rectal slurry guy. Uh, is he doing microbiome and all that? Yeah, is, he, yes. he puts it in his blender and blends it up. And God bless you. Know, that's what we used to do until these companies came in and started making it a little more commercialized, which, you know, Margot does too. And it's it's actually wonderful because their animals that they're utilizing are very clean animals, you know, cl clean fed, generations of clean fed, generations of lower vaccine uh, or any, if any vaccine. And so, I mean, it's, it's, and you utilize the ozone with microbiome. I mean, it's very important to have the two together. So no, I don't think, you know, you, it's a very gentle procedure, actually. It's a small silicone catheter um, that's inserted into the rectum, probably a little bit bigger, maybe than a, it's actually about the size of a thermometer, maybe a little bit bigger. We put olive oil on it. We don't use lube. The olive oil is a little bit nicer, gentler, um, and it, the um, ozone doesn't disrupt anything. And we just slide it in maybe four to five inches, and there's a syringe attached to the end, and we just slowly push the um, ozone gas into the rectum. And we just slide the catheter out and we hold the tail down for a few minutes so that no gas leaks out and it absorbs up into their system. And we've had very few, if any animals really um, argue with us about that. We just, we don't see that as an issue. I think it's all in your energy too, like how you approach them and, you know, how you handle them. Obviously there's some animals that it's like, don't touch my butt. I don't want you near my butt, leave me alone. But then if that's not going to work, we can certainly, there's so many other ways to get ozone into the system. A really cool way to do it too is subcutaneous fluids, because I learned that from Margo, actually, if you do between the shoulder blades, that's like, you know, one of the highest points for acupuncture, it's a very powerful point and it just floods that back area. Right. So now you've got ozone just oozing into the system, right in a very slow way while you're hydrating the animal. So I do it with a lot of my kidney patients, but that's another really cool way to get it in there if you have somebody who's not gonna let you do the, the rectal. Um, so very yeah. interesting. You guys don't rectal horses. Is it because their GI tract's just crazy long or? No, I, a lot of people do. They prefer that for ulcers, um, GI things. I just, find that I've had a longer the, catheter or yeah, you're the same one that. we use on the dogs they're, they're fairly they're, long I mean, I mean yeah you don't have to they're a four millimeter they're 12 French catheter so they're not huge um but they're they're so um soft right, right. and they're not they're they're not really invasive and to get that into a horse really isn't an issue it's really about just getting the gas up high enough because it'll go again, ozone goes where it's needed. So it just kind of finds its way when That's you're dealing so cool. with rectal. I think the rectal for horses is a really excellent way for um, hor the general horse owner that's maybe not comfortable with needles per se. It, it, does, it is effective and it does work. I just choose to do the DIV. I get fantastic results with it. Um, I have done quite a bit of rectal on a horse that hates needles. So my horse, that would be a little difficult to do by myself. I should probably rectal him. Right. I think on your horse, but you know, I have, I have a, a horse that I'm a part owner on and he was also recommended to be euthanized for uh, radial arm paralysis. And that horse would paw your head off over needles. And after I ozoned him about three times, he was like right here wow. <laughs> and I didn't, I could go in his stall and ozone him and not even put a halter on him. That's amazing. Well, he I hope I got, that. he would, he would come at you. Yeah. No, the, the chestnut horse of mine used to be like that. 
he used to like just plow you down and run run and launch and right so he's come a long way but i'll be excited if he's like showing me his vein going come on <laughs> let's do this now it's really interesting i mean when i was there on saturday i was observing the horses more from a totally from a different perspective because i was very hands off and I mean, I watched their faces, I watched their body language. And after they received it, it was almost like, oh, yes. you know, I noticed that Dr. Jill, even with the hoof soaks. So every time I put the hoof soaks on the horses, you could almost time it like 30, 40 seconds, big sigh, yeah. big sigh, hang their head. You know, they might be a little tense in the cross tie when you slap that boot on and then they just, oh, and they loved it. And yeah. it made the hoof, like I only ozonated one hoof, you know, because they had that hole in that one hoof. Well, that hoof grew so much faster that I kind of kicked myself that I didn't do at least the front two. So they grew evenly. So now we have kind of uneven hooves. So I find that interesting because a farrier told me last week, the horse that had the radial arm paralysis, he said, I don't know what you're doing to this horse, but his feet grow so fast and he's not on anything special he's not on I mean he he's on his little herbal concoction but his feet since we started ozoning him I mean I, he's been getting it regularly for over a year now and his feet do grow a lot faster than some of the other horses yeah it's definitely something we are consistently observing between our observations and you have 2,500 horses under you and I have one or two <laughs> so excellent ladies thank you for joining us today I think that covers all our questions and um I just appreciate your time thank you for coming thank you for coming to my barn I look forward to next month and if you guys want more information on that feel free to reach out or go to the website and there's phone numbers there you can call and talk to Dr. Jill or Michelle. I don't know whose number actually is on that. So maybe okay. Debbie. I don't know. Debbie, Debbie's the pet. <laughs> whose pet number pet. is it? It's Thank not mine. Thank you, Poppy, too, for having us. You're a yes. breath of fresh air. Really, you've been amazing. Um, you're an amazing um, communicator. And just this whole um, forum of information and educating people is fantastic and we hope it can continue and grow and we're here to support you in any way we can thank you so much it's such an honor to serve your pets um and next so friday dr jill is back at the cancer-free canine page and we're talking about all sorts of modalities that on that page for all the things she does for her cancer cases so that's going to be at 1 a.m or p.m not a.m 1 p.m for Dr. Jill, 1 a.m. is fine, but no not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Jill does not sleep. But anyway, so 1 p.m. Friday, Pacific Standard, Cancer Free Canine Page. And all of you members are welcome to join on the Zoom. So the Zoom link's pretty much always the same, you guys, unless somebody hacks it. All right. <laughs> Have a great week. Thanks, all right. Abby. Thank you. Take care. Bye.